Today, I'm gonna show you this R34 video that I made. It was a Need for Speed Underground 1 edit, kind of like an inspiration from the Need for Speed era. So I used an R34 as the reference to make the E-Siders livery of the car. And I did a bunch of effects and different things in this video. So I'll do the whole breakdown right now inside Adobe After Effects. To start off, we have many layers in here, but no need to worry. These are very simple and easy to explain. So all of these are the logos on the vehicle. So these logos right here is basically the design. Right here we have the East Siders logo. This is from the Need for Speed Underground 1 um, livery. This was the R34. I believe it was a cover photo too. So I basically just looked up the logos, replaced them all here, added my logo in there as well, and then did the East Siders. And let me show you how I put this on the car itself. So if I hide all the logos, we now have just the original clip um, with the mask. So the mask is just the car, no wheels, nothing else, just the paint of the car. So you can truly change just the color of the car and we can apply the East Siders logo on the car because you can see right here, it goes through the wheel. So in order to get it to go through the wheel, you need to have a mask that is only connected to the paint of the car. Like you can see right here, we have our original clip. The first thing I did on my original clip was track my camera. So you're gonna add 3D camera tracker, analyze it, and you're gonna get all the points right. Obviously, you should select something on the car itself. So go like this, right click, create solid and camera is the option, and then you'll get a camera. And it'll also paste a solid layer when you do play solid and camera. This solid will most likely be exactly where you want it, which will be 3D tracked on the car itself. So we just use that as a reference point so we can match these all in. The next thing I did is I'd add in my logos. The next step you need to do is mask out the car. So once you track your layer, you have this layer, you're gonna duplicate it, and then you're gonna delete the 3D camera tracker. You're gonna open up Rotor Brush. You can start from anywhere you want in the timeline. I just like starting from the beginning, and you're gonna Rotor Brush out just the paint of the car. So take your time with this, and you don't wanna rush this just because it's very important to get a clean look on this. Um, make sure the wheels aren't in it, of course. Go ahead and make sure the Rotor Brush is good throughout, and then you can go ahead and over here, you can press freeze. So then your Rotor Brush is frozen, and it's no longer moving cool so now we should have the original layer and now we should have the mask layer like this this mask layer is going to be used as a mat this will be somewhat of like a reference layer for the other layers we're going to be putting in here which happens to be just the east siders logo which is this one right here we need to connect this logo let me undo it real quick for you so we need to connect this logo to the paint in order for this to go through the wheel. So to do that, go down here to toggle switches, unless you have this all opened, and then go to mat right here with the pick whip. You're gonna drag this onto your mask layer. That will hide your mask layer, which is fine. We don't need that mask layer anymore. We don't need it to be showing at least. So that's how you do it through the wheel. Uh, so you can get the livery throughout. See, you can see like this, it goes throughout. Now that that's set up, you can go ahead and enable 3D layers. So I'll start with just the East Siders logo. So let me start over. When you first put it into a 3D layer, it'll probably be somewhere random on your timeline. So you just have to look for it. Like my case, it's right here. Obviously not where we want it. So when you did do the 3D camera tracker and you make that solid layer, you now have a position in 3D space. So if you press P, open that position, copy that position. We can hide that layer now. Go to your East Siders, um, go to the, go to the, Go to the logo, in my case it's Eastsiders, so I'm just going to reference what I'm using. The Eastsiders, vinyl, decal, whatever, press P, but make sure it's already a 3D layer. So you get all three access points, and then we're going to paste that position that we copied from the track solid. So you can see now, it literally puts it on the car where we want it. So you might need to do a little bit of touch-ups, as in moving the Z-axis, so you can press P, and move the Z-axis, as in bring it closer, further, whatever you need. But I think it did a great job. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it, bring it down a bit, and we can stretch it out a little bit. And and I'll move it in. Stretch it out a bit. Cool. Now we have the East Siders decal in here. So that's the first step. Now that we have the design on the actual car, which is really cool to see, we can go ahead and add all the other little points doing the same method, but these ones are a little bit easier because we're just putting them right here. So let me switch the quality so you can see a little bit better. But these are all 3D layers and they're all pretty much just placed on the car. Nothing has changed. 
Great. So now that we have the whole scene set up, we need to now duplicate our rotor brush layer, which is this mask layer. So in my case, I already have it right here. Duplicate it. And the one that doesn't have the mat, like this right here, this little icon, enable that. And you can bring that up under the e-siders. You need this below your vinyls and decals because if you put it above, it'll obviously get rid of it. So we have our rotor brush layer now, which we want to transform and do a type of warp glow effect. So the way I like to do it is I like to do a mask. So the problem comes when you do a mask on a rotor brush, it doesn't always work. Nothing happens, right? So you first need to pre-compose this layer. So pre-compose it because we want to bring in this rotor brush. We want to put that inside the pre-comp. So we no longer have to worry about it. There's no more problems and we can mask our layer. So now it's in the pre-comp and you'll see when we mask, it will actually work now. Great. So I'm going to set some masks like this in somewhat of a direction of the car because the whole idea is we want it to go like this. We want it to wipe. You can also use transitions such as Sapphire, do a wipe transition or AE might even have some wipe transitions in here, like linear wipe. And you can literally do that too, whichever suits you, whatever you want. But I just like to mask so I have more control. First, we're going to keyframe this. So I'm going to go to the beginning, press M on this on this mask layer and I'm going to keyframe the path. So we're gonna start the path all the way down here. Move in to wherever you want it to come in and I'll put the mask back out and adjust this as needed. I'm gonna go in the middle to see how it looks, see if I like it, looks fine. Next thing to really smoothen this out and make it flow better is the feather. So if you open up the mask or press F on your keyboard, you can see the mask feather. So we're gonna feather this just so we get a nice smooth blend in here. Cool, that's good enough for me. And the next thing we need to do now is change the color and add some glow to this. So the way I'm gonna do this is by adding Lumetri Color. And let me show you how I do it. So I'm using my essential effects. I'm gonna click on Lumetri Color. And let's get into here and start changing the colors up. Let's go to HSL Secondary. Go to Key, make sure this is active. This is basically gonna select our color and we're gonna dial it in and change it to what we want. So HSL sliders, we're going to select something that looks like the car. You can always press on show mask to show what you're doing. So in my case, we're selecting the yellows, but we want to make sure it's just the car. So remember, this is also a rotor brush layer. So you're not going to see all this extra stuff here. So if I disable the mask, you'll see it's still just the car, right? So don't have to worry about it. So next we're going to go to refine. I like to bring my denoise up just so it gets a little bit softer and blur around one to two. Correction, here's where we can change the color. So you open up this color wheel right here and we can literally select whatever color we want. So in this case, Need for Speed Underground 2 was a golden orange. So I'm gonna put it towards the gold orange. I'm gonna bring down the darkness over here on this tab. Uh, temperature, I'm gonna raise the temperature up over here. You literally just dial this in however you want. Saturation, more or less, whatever. You also need to remember that this isn't color graded yet. So when I do convert this and color correct it, it will be a little bit darker. So I'll leave it somewhat like this. And there we have the color change. So let me unsolo this. And now we can see, actually, let me solo it and show you. So now you can see that it's doing a color shift over the car, right? So if I unmute this, we now have a color shift on the car. Now, the only thing it's missing is some glow. So I'm gonna use Sapphire Glow. If you don't have Sapphire, there's a built-in glow in here. It's okay, but I prefer using a plugin. You can use Deep Glow, S Glow, whatever you want. And I'm just going to dial in the glow. Very simple settings, nothing crazy, because you'll see it's gonna start glowing in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keyframe my threshold. So at the beginning, I'm not gonna have it too much, just a little bit. As it comes in more, I'm gonna have it go down. So it's more of like a shine when it comes in, goes down, and then we'll have it go to nothing. And that's for the glow. So now our clip is literally transformed, different color. We got 3D aspects on the car. So it looks like the actual need for speed car. So now we're gonna go back into our main comp and let's make sure the colors are correct and all that. So as I said, you'll notice the colors are different once you color grade, especially if you're an S-Log. So I recommend taking your conversion LUT or your Lumetri color that's converted from S-Log, paste that in here and then adjust accordingly based on that correction. Cool, now that it's all dialed in, added somewhat of a green little tint to the actual glow itself. Green and orange, kind of like a need for speed theme. So 
that's how we do the transformation of the need for speed car and the last thing we're going to do is add a speed ramp on it so i'm going to do this and then i'm going to have it reverse out so i'll change my curve strength start speed middle speed we'll have it a little bit slower maybe around 60 to 70 end speed reverse out and i'm going to apply my speed ramp to this layer so here's the results of what we just did and what i showed you Cool. So central effects helps with that. I also added an effect from the central effects in the effects. I like to do some type of wave because of the sound effects and all the stuff I'm doing in here. So I'll just adjust the width real quick, make this a little bit bigger and reduce the speed and let's press play. Now that we're done with the first effect, the livery and all that, I want to talk to you about my central effects plugin so this is a plugin that i designed for adobe after effects and i've been continuously updating it i'm still figuring out how i want it to look and how i want it to feel and how i want it to function but here it is and it's always getting updated and we have some big plans for it so go ahead check it out if you're interested it's available on the website djordanmedia.com so let's get into the next effect so next up we have this effect right here we have some 3d text and we have some effects in the background masks Nothing crazy in this, let me go over this. So here is the actual breakdown of the effects in here. We have the original layer, which is just nothing. We have the adjustment layer, which has, we have an adjustment layer, which has some sapphire effects, such as time warp and streaks that are basically the background of this. So you can see it's the warping and all the effects behind it. Above that, we have the mask layer, the rotor brush, which is just the car. I wanted this to pop out more and then have effects behind it. So that's how I did that. And then above our mask layer, we have a blur. So as the text comes in, I blurred the car out basically. So you can see here, blurred, non-blurred, you get it. And of course this is 3D tracks because we had a 3D element right here, which is element 3D. So same thing as the first one, you're gonna want to 3D camera track, make a solid so you have a reference point on the 3D plane. And we're gonna go ahead and make an element 3D layer and a text layer. So the first thing I do is make a text layer with what I want it to portray. So chose the font, chose the movement, chose the spread and 369 just because the song says it. And you can just go ahead and mute that because you don't need it. And we're going to go to a solid layer. So you want to make a solid layer, add element 3D to this layer. And this is how you can connect your text to the 3D layer itself. You're going to go over here to custom layers under element 3D. And for path layer one, you're going to select 369. We're going to go ahead and open the scene setup and you're going to press extrude. Extrude will make your model. So now your text is in here in 3D space. Obviously, I already made it. I like to throw on a Chrome in the physical, the original stuff, throw on Chrome. And the next detail is making a reference frame so you can set a realistic 3D environment on the element 3D itself. So to do that, a trick I like to do is go to content aware fill and create reference frame. Once you create a reference frame, it'll open up Photoshop, but you don't need it. And it will create a little frame like this. So if I solo this out, you can see that solo this out, it's literally just a blank image. There's nothing else. So that's all you need for the reference frame and the environment. So we're gonna head back to our 3D element, go down to the custom layers again, but this time go to custom texture maps. And you're gonna set that to the reference frame. You can also rename it to environment, just so you know that that's the environment. And now that we have that connected, we can go back in our scene setup, go to environment, click on this arrow and go custom layer one. So now you can see our environment is literally what we want it to be, which is our scene. So it looks a little bit more in place. And we're gonna press okay. And now it's blended in with that. Cool. And as always, you just put this in 3D space. You can use world transform or you can use group one and then go here to particle replicator, uh, which I did. And you can adjust this in 3D space, however you want. I also did some animations of rotation and some Z axis effects. So to do that, you need to go to group one where your group is synced, where the element synced, go down to particle look and enable multi object right here. So when you enable multi object, it will separate each individual piece of that text that you have. So like this, we can do different sizes. We can do different displacements. Uh, scatters is what I used. So I did a Z scatter. So basically did a Z scatter, so it's in the Z depth, and then it would come down and go back to its original value. Another one I love to do is rotation random. I don't know why I can't find it right now, 
Oh, here it is, rotation. So rotation random um, is one of my favorite things to do. You literally can just rotate like this, and I think it just looks so cool. So you can animate, have fun, do whatever you need with this. But that's the full breakdown of this. It's pretty straightforward. It's just 3D tracking and then some effects in the background. Moving on, now that that effect is done, we have some clips here, and I noticed that this one's not even speed ramps. I must have deleted it, maybe a failed tutorial, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the speed ramp controller. So this is basically based off time warp. So when you speed ramp, there's two methods. There's time mapping, and there's also speed ramp, like time warp, twixer, which is keyframes, and it's using speed to determine your speed ramp. So in this case, this is a time warp method, an automated method where there's no more keyframes. I can't emphasize this enough. We are working on an update to do multi speed ramps with this version of the speed ramp controller. But if you want to do a custom speed ramp, you need to learn it because overall, you still need to know the software. So if you don't know the software, this could be challenging for you. But it's basically the start speed, which is the beginning speed of your clip, the middle speed, which is the slowdown right here. That's what this is. And then the end speed is how fast it goes out. And if you want it to reverse, you can click the reverse and then you apply it, it will reverse out of there. So for this one, I'm gonna keep simple settings like this. Curve strength, I stay above 75 almost always. This is your curve graph, basically like making a U shape um, for the speed ramp. And all you do is press apply on the speed ramp controller and it will automatically apply and create a whole speed ramp for you that is automated. And to adjust it, all you do is move this. If you have a full length clip like this, it just won't work because you can't speed ramp a five second clip and expect five seconds of speed ramp. It doesn't work that way. So you shorten it to however you want and just dial in the buttons so you don't get any freezing or anything and you get a complete speed ramp. And if you ever need to change anything, you literally just change it. Say it's too fast, you don't like it. Change the speed and press apply again and it'll literally update it as is. You don't need to adjust anything, that's it. It's literally that easy. And you can go ahead and do that for all these clips. And as you can see, I actually use this for my projects. So this next clip right here already has the speed ramp controller on it. This one I already pre-rendered because there was issues, but you can see that I actually use my speed ramp controller. You don't use it all the time, okay? This just helps sometimes when you need it. Um, if you wanna do custom speed ramping, of course, do a custom speed ramp. So I didn't wanna make this video too long, but that sums up the breakdown of this video. I hope that helped and I hope you wanna learn a lot more. Don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe because content is coming and I will be pushing out so many new things that I really want to show everyone. So hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.